Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Another week, another meta report. I got three more decks that are absolutely tearing it up right now, and you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves, or if you want to know how to counter them. Now that the expansion has been out for over a week, the meta is taking form. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And of course, starting us off, we have to address the elephant in the room, and that is Fizz Siren Song, skyrocketing to the top of the meta in this past week. It's got a win rate of 57.39% and a play rate of 4.82%, showing just how powerful it is in this meta. The best matchups for it include Poro King Siren Song, Vagar Senna Darkness, Viego Evelyn, and also Dragons. The bad matchups for this deck are few and far between, but we have Echo Nidalee, Jinx Echo, Teemo, and also Jax Orn. Basically, in the past week, right since the previous meta report, Evelyn Siren Song was like predominantly the best deck. So what happened was Fizz and a whole bunch of other one drops came together to create a new deck that basically does the same thing, but faster. It basically maintains all the aspects of the Evelyn variation that's really strong while also being able to beat the Evelyn variation, which has made it an absolute nightmare in this past week and a lot of people are calling for hotfix nerfs. So looking at the curve we can see exactly what's going on here. This deck runs 22 one drops which is where all of our pressure is coming from. Of course if you combine this with Siren Song, granting one cost allies everywhere plus one plus one, and also the long forgotten landmark that's actually very powerful here, Reaver's Row, also giving one cost allies buffs and fearsome, you can see where this kind of really strong deck would take form, right? If you just run a whole bunch of one drops, you run a bunch of draw and a lot of buffs for them, we have a very scary uh, zoo deck on our hands and it's really hard to beat. Now, it also has a very strong defensive utility card called Divine Clerk, making it to where other fast strategies, like burn strategies, fall flat because Divine Clerk has empower lifesteal. So this thing is going to go up to like 4 attack, fearsome, and then it can also hit husks. So it has like tough husk and regen husk, and it's just a 1 card win con versus other aggressive decks. Getting into the rest of the list, we see that we have Fizz as our champion. He's our only champion. He's one cost. Also, we have a lot of stuff in the deck to help protect Fizz, which I'll talk about. You know, some cheap spells or cheap one drops that generate spells. That way we can use Fizz as a primary win con, casting spells over the course of the game, making him really big, let him hit with elusive damage. And then also when he levels, he gives us a long tooth, which is an overwhelm win con as well. So yeah, really scary. Thank God that long tooth is not a one drop. Otherwise this would just be absolutely insane. Moving on, we have Jagged Butcher, another really strong one drop. We have Lunari Duskbringer, who generates us a Dusk Petal Dust, and we can use this to protect Fizz or give him Elusive whenever we see fit. We can also use this to play Pal Cascade Cheaper, which, you know, that's a pretty good combo as well. Then we have Pocket Picker, who is another one drop who's going to be getting these buffs from Siren Song, and also on Death give you Coin, which, again, we can use for Fizz, either Protection or the Elusive. Shell Shocker, which generates us mana to do any of that. And next we have Solari Soldier, who's a very strong one drop, always has been. The opponent has to pay the Solari Soldier tax. If you play this guy on attack one, they usually just take three to face. And that's going to help you in like race matchups or just, you know, push the early damage. He can come down later with his own Daybreak buff and Husk buffs and stuff like that. Really scary card. We have a couple Targonian Telstones. This is if we don't have like any one cost spells in our hand that we generated. Well, the opponent might try to target Fizz. But surprise, we have Targonian Thelstones, and this can turn into Behold the Infinite for Invoke, you know, mid-late game stuff. We have Hush, which is usually the best case uh, for this, but we can also use Blessing of Targon as lethals or to trade. So it's just overall a very flexible card, and it's really easy for us to be on a lot of mana since we're playing a bunch of one drops. So it doesn't even hurt that we pay one for Telstone and then like four mana for Blessing of Targon. We actually feel pretty good doing that, so yeah, pretty scary in that regard. Hell Cascade, of course helps with the draw cycle and also buffing. Reaver's Row, which I talked about earlier. When I count down, summon a random one cost follower. Countdown two, grant one cost allies to one fearsome. So you just set up like really big uh, one cost boards and then swing. On open attack, you're usually pushing like 12 plus damage. So yeah, it's really good. 
Next, we have Siren Song itself, which is the flavor of the month right now. Everyone is trying to abuse it, and this deck definitely abuses it the most and also the fastest, so that's why we see this deck being borderline tier 0. I wonder what people's opinion of this is. I bet this is actually considered like a tier 0 strategy in this meta. Next we have Ive Nagako Boros, 5 mana spawn 2, draw 2. Fun fact, the tentacles are 1-drop, so it's going to be getting all the buffs. Yeah, really good there. Moonlight Affliction, which hasn't seen a lot of play in the past, but, you know, it's come up in Nightfall decks. It's really interesting to play here, because on open attack, which is what this deck is trying to do a lot, we can just burst speed, like, play something, and then Nightfall, and play this card too, and make it to where opponents can't block. And we have really, like, cheap almost cheating attack calls. That's like really, really scary, really hard for the opponent to deal with. If they do have any defensive utility, you can just shut off two units. You can also use this defensively, by the way, and like silence opponent's units. So yeah, it's just overall like a really strong card, like surprisingly strong. It has gotten some pretty crazy game states and lethals that I've seen recently. And next we have Sunburst, another weird card for aggro to run, but it's really nice at stopping some strategies that the opponent is trying to do. We basically have like slow speed vengeance for what it's worth, right? We can just stop like whatever the opponent is trying to develop, stay ahead, and then just keep slamming one drops. And we have the mana to do this most of the time. That's like the common uh, theme between the Moonlight Affliction and the Sunburst, is that we're usually on enough mana to where we're fine using this and also keep developing our one drops because that's what the deck is comprised of and that feels pretty good. And then of course we have Zolani, which is the other card that is being abused next to Siren Song. When Husks die, Zolani is getting buffed in deck right? And the Husks are also enhanced attack because they have the Siren Song. So the Solani is basically coming down like Turbo, basically always leveled on 7. Uh, if if the deck is playing like really slow, sometimes Zolani comes down on 8 leveled instead, but pretty consistently. Um, a really strong turn 7 win con, which is supported by the cast of 1 drops that are super aggressive and helping Zolani get there. So yeah, it's a pretty easy deck to pilot, and it's actually a really strong deck to play too. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Rise, which is really interesting. I think Rise should probably go to Ionia and use like the new Spirit Breeze card. I don't know what it's called, but you know, and then also have like Deny and Nopify because that is one of the outs to Siren Song is just denying it. So um, Shurima has Ryan Negation, could still do it. But I think Ionia is probably where Rise belongs. So yeah, let's go ahead and mulligan away the Telstone. We could actually keep Sunburst and try to shoot Rise, but I think playing fast is probably what we should do here. And just try to like, you know, hit the gas, play all of our ones, get them nice and buffed. Ancient Prep sounds good. I think I want to do a Duskbringer on one. They forced us to choose death or the blade. And then we can also do Solari Soldier on attack two. And that's the only one drop we play this turn. This way we're threatening 5, and then we're also floating 1, so we go into turn 3, floating 1 mana, allowing us to play Siren Song, and then Siren Song is gonna summon a husk, buff all of our dudes, and then we can play Fizz on the husk, that sounds really good, yeah this is a pretty nice curve overall. So we dump our 1 drops, we have Fizz protection, and then we eye Nagaka Boros to refill hand. Siren Song on turn 4 here. Big buffs. Like, the fact that it's impacting the board right away is what makes this card so good. Dragon Husk. It's like, okay, not the best one for Fizz. Uh, Spell Shield Husk would probably be the best, just to make him even more annoying. But I do want to drop it on him. Yeah. Let's give Fizz the stats. Because we can give him Elusive. Yep. 4-4 four, four Dragon Fizz. Mr. Rise. Yeah, so let's also go ahead and play Pocket and Divine Clerk, who has the lifesteal going for us. Grant us your guidance. We have need of you. And then we can Dusk Petal Dust, right? Give Fizz the elusive, make that hit. They're on three mana, so I don't think anything is going to target him and kill him for four. So I'm just going to use all of our mana, tap out, and get the elusive hit in. It's not safe. Yep. And we're threatening 10 damage even through double blockers. So Rise has to come down here and take some damage. Keep your distance. And they go to 8. So yeah, we're kind of killing them very soon. We could probably do defensive Ive Nagako Boros. Or we can set a pocket picker and whatever we top deck. And then eye on attack. Just keep the pressure going. 
Tellstones. All right. I mean, I'm down to Tellstone, like, Behold the Infinite or Hush. I cannot Realm Warp, you. okay. Hippokai, sure thing. So we should just have, like, an attack six lethal, ideally. We'll see, though. Pocket. Um... Could do Tellstone Behold, then play Behold. Don't really know what that does for us. I mean, we don't really have anything else to do. We could pass also Burning 1 and just hold it. Kind of fine. I don't mind Burning 1 mana. We're going to get the Fizz Elusive on the Eye Call. Here we go. Draw some more cards, which is pretty balanced. I'm actually kind of down to develop and go full wide. Seems like it'd be kind of hard for them to deal with. Rather than open. Because if I open, they could do Shurima Tellstones and do um, the big attack reduction and then block me and then uh, that would deal two to my dudes. I'm pretty sure that's still in rotation, so I'm going to play around that. Let them play Song Spinner, that's fine. We're going to Divine Cleric and just rush him down. Basically, this deck is like a big snowball. If it gets a little bit of a lead, it translates it into a really big lead because we just push so much damage so efficiently. Rummage, draw some cards, go ahead. Look for more answers. Swindle. You could hit my Targodian Telstone. It doesn't really do a lot for you, so it's probably just going to be Pale or Divine Clerk. Divine Clerk, yep. Play mine as well, though. Inspiring Light. Hey, that's pretty cool. And your uh, Divine Clerk can heal you. That's a pretty fun Song Spinner card. Uh, we don't have enough mana for Argonian Hush. So let's swing, swing. Swing with everything and then we'll use uh, Pale Cascade as lethal if we need it. Yeah, okay, they just they just kind of die. Life still would have to block earlier. We kind of just kill them. And for the next deck, we have a returning competitor to Meta Report, and that is Jinx Samira Discard Aggro. With a win rate of 54.38% and a play rate of 1.77%, it is a very solid climbing deck. Its best matchups include Ash LeBanc, Poro King Freljord, Jin Annie, and also Aurelian Soul Ramp. The worst matchups for this deck are Nar Nora Jin, Seraphine Jack, Nar Nora Noxus, and also Timo Jinx Bilge. So getting into the list specifically, there's not a lot of new stuff to talk about. It's still just like the same deck that has been dominant in recent times, Blowback being the most recent card added, and it's very good. Basically, this deck's form of Decimate, you know, just being a very consistent finisher on top of Jinx Rocket and like Jinx Get Excited, a couple Mystics, you're pushing a lot of damage over the course of a couple turns and getting there pretty easily with how fast this deck can swarm and beat down the opponent. Starting us off with the list, we have Crimson Pigeon, very strong one drop, a lot of good targets for its effect in this deck. We have Reborn Grenadier, we have Flame Chompers, you know, things like that, Sump Dredger, um, a lot of things that allow Crimson Pigeon to become a growing threat in the early and mid game. Next, we have Jury Rig. Since we are running Discard, we want to have some targets and some activators. Jury Rig is a very good activator, especially for Zonai Urchin in the early game, allowing us to get some pressure on the board and also drawing us a card, which is a really strong combo. Uh, right here, Zonai Urchin, play, discard a card to draw one. So we can hit the Jury Rig, we can hit the Chompers, we can hit the Grenadier for really strong attack turns. So yeah, really nice there. Next we have Legion Saboteur, a very staple, aggressive one drop from Noxus. Reborn Grenadier, to play, discard one. Also, when I'm discarded, summon an exact copy of me. So, depending on the situation, you can actually use Grenadier to, like, discard another Grenadier. And that can unbrick your hand sometimes, so that's really cool. But also, yeah, whenever Grenadier is hit by any discard activator, just gets to be summoned at burst speed. That's really good. Next, we have Flame Chompers, which is one of the strongest cards in the deck, allowing you to grab things and making it to where the opponent can't block the way they want to. You can make things really uncomfortable. Uh, you can also, like, hit Vision on Flame Chompers and make it trade up into things, which is really cool. Uh, it's also a really good Crimson Pigeon target, like I mentioned. Really strong card overall. Grave Physician allows us to cycle through the deck a little bit, discard one of our dudes, and also draw another unit. And, you know, if he hits a champion, then we're feeling really good. He can actually, like, draw Jinx directly to your hand, and that's a pretty nice high roll. Uh, really good at keeping the pressure going in the mid game. 
A couple Mystic Shot, of course. A couple Rummage as well. Would not run this at 3, gets a bit bricky, but running it at 2 is perfect. That way you can get Jinx on board, dump the last two cards, get Jinx Rocket, feels really nice. Next we have Triple Samira, which is just like the go-to early game uh, Noxus aggressive unit. Really good synergy with the rest of the deck being a nice cheap card. Gives us uh, Flare on Summon or on Strike, and we can actually use Flare as a discard target in case we don't have any good things to discard in hand. Um, so pretty nice, can unbrick our hand sometimes, can give her Challenger, and Challenger Quick Attack is still a very good combo. Uh, we can also level her and rally in the mid game, so we can get some really strong swings in, and then rally, swing again, super nice there. A couple some Dredger to continue cycling through our deck, basically a big Zana Urchin, love that. Triple Vision, so if we are wide, we have like 4-6 to six units, we can hit a very big Vision and have really strong attack turns, especially like if you Rummage Vision, that's a big surprise factor that the opponent isn't prepared for. Like if you have a, a Flame Chomper and then some dudes set up, and then you Rummage Double Vision, it's like holy, the opponent just like gets run over by that kind of board. Really scary card. Triple Blowback for direct damage. Jinx. When your hand is empty, she becomes Super Jinx, and then Super Jinx gives you a rocket, which you can use to deal direct damage to the opponent's face. Also, the one little damage to all the opponent units, really good, really nice. And then every turn she draws you an extra card, and she can give you more rockets, and really strong. can use this as burn lethals. And rounding it out, we have Augmented Experimenter, dumping our hand, drawing three. Really good if Jinx is on the board and we need to get our hand nice and empty. Augmented Experimenter is a one card. Jinx level for us, so really good to play on 6, refill the hand later, and then uh, continue finding burn through him. And that's it for the deck rundown. If you want a nice, fast aggro deck to play that has a lot of draw and a lot of champion consistency, definitely give this deck a shot. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Aatrox Kale, definitely a uh, Siren Song list, so someone abusing the best card in the game. Mmm, interesting. So, we have Samira with the new skin. Very nice, very cool. Let's get rid of Rummage, Reborn Grenadier, Great Physician. Um, yeah, we're gonna play Samira on two. We could probably just get rid of the rest. Physician, Reborn Grenadier is like an okay keep, but I'd definitely rather see my Urchin. I'd rather see my Sump Dredger and my Jinx. We got the same combo back though. We're still on the Physician Grenadier, so that's probably gonna come out on attack four. We can get Samira developed early though. Play her. Take the shot or lose the chance. That gives us flare pressure, so now they have to worry about challenge or quick attack. Uh, we could accept this pass, but I do want to hit them. And the most important part of this matchup, actually, is if we're playing on this board, we need to go to red board. Blue is not going to do it. Pink is okay, but not really the best one either. So we're going to cycle to red board, which is uh, the Jinx one. Since we are playing Star Guardian Jinx, it fits the theme. So let's go ahead and slam that. We tend the fire Lifesteal, yep. Pretty strong card into us. Let's do Grave Physician into Flame Chomper. So to awaken the blood within. If they play a Siren Song here, I might actually just Mystic Shot the Divine Clerk. Because he's going to get kind of annoying. Heart, okay. Ooh, that is interesting. Let's let them attack. Start the attack just call. Then we Mystic way. Shot. We kill him even through Pale, which is nice. So go ahead and deal with that right quick. Really good Mystic. Um, I want to get these Grenadiers down. Uh, top deck Rummage would have been the best. We can do some Dredger Grenadier though. Or we can do like Grenadier, Grenadier, and then just hard play Vision. Both are really good options. We could also do Blowback, but there's no unit on the board. We get more value if we could shoot something and then play double Grenadier. So it's pretty interesting. We could do a couple things. I do kind of like Grenadier, Grenadier, and Hard Play Vision. It's kind of greedy. It's not the most efficient, but it is the most damage, which we could be pushing here. So let's go for that route. Grenadier, Grenadier. And then just Vision. Or we could some Dredger Vision. Wait, what am I talking about? It's even better. Look at that. So I have an action here. Some Dredger Vision. Boom. Big wide attack buffs. The uh, maximum value vision I could hit. And then we have Jinx in hand. Blowback for direct damage. A flare for direct damage. Yeah, you better Pale Cascade that. Because I'm threatening a lot here. Yeah, play another unit probably. Nope. We just killed them on attack 4. That is Jinx Samira aggro right there. 
And to round out the video, we actually have a new face to Meta Rapport, and that is Swain Alawi Control. With a win rate of 56.27% and a play rate of 1.72%, it is the Swain deck to play. Its best matchups include Teemo Ionia, Poro King, Aurelian Soul Ramp, and also Teemo Caitlyn. Its worst matchups are Azir Nasus, I'm assuming that's Vaults of Helia, Nar Nora, Nora Jin, and also Teemo Freljord. While the other two decks I've covered in this video are very fast and aggressive decks, here is one for the control players to enjoy, which is, you know, like I said, the best version of Swain right now. Coupled with Alawi and having really strong board pressure, it's actually a really sick deck. So it starts off with a couple Parley. We use this as early game executes. It's our ping one, which is really good because it also double dips and hits the opponent's nexus, which is two procs for Swain level, which we'll talk about really good. Next we have Watchful Idol, which is like the best Swain support card that uh, people don't think about. Round start deal 2 to me. Every time this happens, that is ramping up Swain level. If you develop two Watchful Idols in the early game, that's Swain level by itself. So yeah, Watchful Idol is really good at ramping him, and it also gets the tentacle on the board, which you can use for, you know, blocking or just setting up a big tentacle in case you have a very tentacle-focused hand with a Lowy Seas voice, stuff like that. So you can kind of just like... Play it by ear, you know, figure out what you should do each and every turn with the early game tentacle, and just kind of go from there. We have a couple disintegrate, of course, coupling this with Parley, or Pirouette, or Make It Rain, allowing it to kill even really high HP units. Next we have Heavy Metal, Slow Speed Spell, destroy a unit's equipment, and deal 2 to it. So if the opponent, you know, plays an early game unit, puts a weapon on it, well, uh, Heavy Metal is going to kill the weapon and deal 2. If that kills the enemy unit, then wow, this card gets some insane value. Really, really strong card. It's uh, basically a slow speed Mystic Shot for units, but yeah, really good overall. Make It Rain, of course, premium Bilgewater removal, we want that. Pirouette, another really strong card, being able to ping one and stun another thing, really good defensive tool. Uh, we can also, again, use this in conjunction with Disintegrate and execute things, really scary. Next we have Triple Tentacle Smash, since we are playing Alawi, we are also playing Tentacle Smash, allowing us to spawn, you know, more tentacles or add to the tentacle stats and then have it strike something, being able to hit for a lot of damage, which is really good. Seize Voice, attack, spawn one and give your strongest tentacle, overwhelm. So this is dipping into the Alawi half of the deck, uh, basically giving us a really big tentacle and using it as an overwhelm win con. If we get our tentacle up to like five or six, that's really beefy, really hard for the opponent to deal with, and we'll be pushing a lot of damage with it via Seize Voice and also via Alawi herself. On attack, Alawi spawns one and then gains power equal to the strongest tentacle's power, so she goes up to like, you know, eight attack with overwhelm. Really scary mid-game unit, uh, really good attack pressure, and then, you know, when she levels, she's also healing the tentacle and herself, becoming a reoccurring mid-game threat. Next we have Ivnagakobodos to draw cards and also make the tentacle even bigger. Swain, our other champion, our control boy, has Fearsome, Nexus Strike, deal 3 to the enemy Nexus. Also level up, you've dealt 12 non-combat damage over the course of the game, so again, this is like the um, direct damage spells, it is our watchful idol damaging itself, and then boom, we have leveled Swain, allowing us to stun back row enemies whenever um, pings happen to the enemy Nexus. Really good card overall. Also, if we're on multiple Swain, we have access to Ravenous Flock, which is one of the strongest control tools that uh, Noxus has ever seen, so yeah, we still have access to it as long as we open multiple Swains. Next we have Lord Bromain, uh, 6 mana 3, 5 play, deal 2 to an enemy. Your fast spells, slow spells, and skills have, so like, we gain a new effect on all of our spells. Basically it says, when I damage a stunned or damaged enemy, kill it. So it turns all of our pings into executes, every single one of them. It's kind of like having Disintegrate, just AoE, on every opponent's unit, as long as Bromain stays on the board. So for example, if we have Bromain, our parley becomes kill a damaged unit, and that's really scary. Even one mana, one slow speed spell, can kill like a 10 HP thing, as long as it's already damaged and uh, Bromain sees you do it. So, really good card. It also comes with a Mystic Shot on summon. Really scary. Riptide Sermon, 6 mana, deal 3 to an enemy, spawn 3, and deal 1 to the enemy Nexus. So, we're helping Alawi, we're helping Swain at the same time. Really good removal card, hits for 3, really nice. Next we have Triple Leviathan, which allows us to create the Leviathan Lock, I like to call it. When Swain is leveled, he will stun back row enemies whenever pings to the enemy Nexus happens. Leviathan, conveniently, round start, pings the enemy Nexus twice. 
So that's a uh, double stun immediately on the two highest attack units, right? The two strongest units the opponent has. And then Leviathan is also dealing chip damage. Really scary. Um, kind of hard to deal with. So yeah, you get to the point where it's just like a soft lock. The opponent has to come up with like an out for Leviathan and Swain. And if you're on a Lowian Tentacle, they have to come up with outs for those two. And yeah, it's really hard. And rounding out the list, we have Riptide Rex, where if we do ping the opponent's face, well, we also get big AoE removal that turns into direct damage if the units die. Riptide Rex was like an absolute classic to be played right after Leviathan in early iterations of Swain. Happy to see him back. Riptide Rex is still here. He's still the GOAT, and he's uh, still closing out games or making opponents surrender. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Kaisa Demacia, which I've been asked a lot about recently. Yes, Kaisa Demacia is still in a very strong spot. Really good deck if you want to climb. So we're going to be fighting that. Let's see if we can keep it down. We have Idol on one. We have Heavy Metal for early game removal. We could probably get rid of Riptide Rex for sure. And I'm thinking about I. I'm pretty sure we get rid of I. In this matchup, we very much want Disintegrate so that we can kill Kaisa on summon and deal with their tough units that they play. Because they can generate tough with that uh, three mana card, and that's really annoying. And then give it to Kaisa. Watchful Idol on one is going to be our go-to. And then we can actually pass turn two just to make sure that we have spell mana. And use our removal accordingly. Being able to stop Kaisa on summon is going to be like our main game plan, yeah. Swing. Floating turn two feels good. Because a lot of our options, you know, are two mana. Then we can float, go into Seize Voice, Alawi. Yep. We traded a free tentacle for uh, their fearsome unit, so that's a great trade for us. We're on Parley, Pirouette. Okay. We got some good removal. This is probably form up. I'm kind of down to take form up from them. Go ahead. That's minus two mana. Top deck form up. You got it. Because I'm getting this tentacle back anyways. And we have Seize Voice into a Lowie. Ah, a beautiful day for sailing. Voidling? Um, I'm kind of down to parley that now, or we can do Pirouette and take off the Spell Shield. I don't think we need to do that though. I think it could just be parley. And then I will a Lowie and swing with both. Yeah, this unit's gonna go back to being a 3-1, which is chill. We have Pirouette for Kaisa on attack 5 for them. Go ahead and allow me. So right now we're doing a good mix of controlling the board while also pushing our board. We want to make sure we attack with Alawi on the far right. That way she gets the buff last after all the uh, other buffs go through. Just more efficient. So it's going to be a 3-3 three, three overwhelm, 3-3, three, three, which they probably block, and then 5-6 overwhelm. Yep. Seems good. Pass. Alright, they probably want to do Kaisa and also Valor, right? That's the best they can do on attack 5. Will that level Kaisa? I think so. Challenger. Uh, Scout, yeah. Oh, it's Garen. No Kaisa, that's good news. I don't think I care about Garen. Um, hmm. I could accept this. Yeah, I mean, I'm down to just pass. I only burn three, and I don't really have anything great to do here. I'd rather Garen attack, I block, and then Sermon to finish him off. Especially since they played a form up, they're less likely to be on a buff. Pirouette's not correct, because I actually would rather him attack, or save stun for later on more important units. So yeah, it's just pass. I don't really have a great play. If he attacks though, then I do have a great play. It's called block with tentacle. That will get allow it closer to level, and then we Riptide Sermon to finish him off. Big. And he can't even like single combat or anything to stop this. If they're on form up, he lives with one. If they uh, magically have second form up, that's fine. If they run something weird like chain vest, he still dies. Um, it is second form up. Okay. He lives with one and then he regens up the full what next turn. That is a-okay though. Stay resolute. For turn six, we're probably doing Seize Voice for sure. 
And then we could do make it rain pirouette or heavy metal pirouette. Yeah. Let's go ahead and lead C's voice. Mother Serpent brings us together for another voyage. May she look upon our journey with pride. And then they play oh, something and we can do make it rain pirouette. Did I say heavy metal pirouette? I can't do that. I can do make it rain pirouette though. Because uh, pirouette's gonna proc plunder. Garbin, yeah. Go ahead and ping off the barrier. And then hit face so we can pirouette. Feels good. And then we have Leviathan on 7 to draw our Swain. Ping face more. Our Swain should be leveled. Our Lowey's gonna level. We're in a great spot. This feels really good. And they're on double champion as well, just not Kai'Sa. So let's go ahead and probably ping Garen and stun Jarvan. Because if we ping Garen, then he can't even value block or seize voice and level. We don't really care about pinging face here. We just want to make sure our attack is as good as possible. Bop, bop, bop. Here, like this. So now they're just dead, right? We got them on lockdown. It's a lot of overwhelm damage. Yep. Got them. Uh, there's nothing you can do for one mana. Let's go. And the Alawi level to uh, close out. Little bit of a flex. Big tentacle woman. Nice. And to wrap things up with some closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, Siren Song Fizz has basically taken things over and people are calling for nerfs. There are plenty of other strong strategies as well, so I hope you can find a deck that you can enjoy and get some wins with. I truly believe that if a hotfix happened and Siren Song gets hit, we'd enter one of the best metas in a while with like 7 playable high tier decks. So that's basically what we're praying for at this point. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!